Hello everyone, Muli Mutia Muli Mutia, Jiri Jitia Jemotu Sake Ngalo, Yona Yona Jemoli Banna Yemo Lemele Yoko 2020 Yako Lemele Yako Olaba Ne Tufunye Ne Presidential Aspirants Banna Yono Yese Ma Inchi Ya Ichi Ya Chimena Ye Ni Mwe Muna Jafu No Oluru Katumba Oye Aga Kantu Kansi Sa Anyway um, Lero is the story lero ya mwana mulenzi um fena go tumanyinga Bobby Wine oba presidential aspirant fena go tumanyinga chakulanyi center uh, yabadde ko radio emu eh, arua nga akakasa abantu chino omurachi you have to go out and vote for him come that day um in in 2021 the polling date uh, yatukakasiza Na mani dipulichi muna haba kakasanga wageno kubuildinga roads, schools, biona biona. Anyway, uh, rachi mwogiri la kamba. Lageka video waneno na mwela bideko. Iranga mwuri da kudobo zile yenyini yenyini nga yogira kubiagendo kola. This is Rantaway with Juliana and Emma. Well, we do know that uh, art can be a powerful tool for promoting social and economic change and uh, today we are having a conversation with uh, Honorable Robert Chagulanyi uh, aka Bobby Wine. He is uh, a musician, a Ugandan member of parliament uh, representing Chadondo East uh, constituency and uh, now a presidential candidate uh, with uh, the party uh, National Unity Platform. He has always carried a message of social justice for all of us and uh, that's coming up next right here on radio purchase 94.5 fm uh, in this particular talk show well hello and uh, welcome to all of you who are listening to radio purchase 94.5 fm and welcome to the talk show hour here at uh, the home and headquarters of radio purchase in Ethiopia hills arua city I am Noel Aikubwa and uh, joining us here in the studio for uh, this particular discussion, I do have uh, the one and only Ugandan member of parliament, artist and uh, national unity platform presidential uh, flag bearer and candidate for the upcoming uh, general elections, Robert Sentamu Chagulanyi, also known as Bobby Wine. And uh, Bobby Wine, I have to say sincerely, that uh, I am profoundly honored and uh, exceedingly humbled to have the opportunity to host you here at Radio Purchase and particularly 94.5 FM Studios for the first time. Thank you. Thank you very much. I know I only have one complaint to hold against you. You see, while you mention your beautiful name, Noel, you're not mentioning my new beautiful name. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself again, listeners. My name is Chagolani Sentamo Robert, also known as Bobby Wine and also known as Obin. That is my new name. Okay. So, Obini. Uh, Obini. All of you listening to me, my new name is Obini. And whenever I'm in West Nile or wherever you find me, don't shy away from calling me Obini. I salute you, friends in Arua, and I thank you for giving us such a massive welcome. In the studio with me, I'm with uh, the uh, woman, uh, the Arua City woman MP to be, uh, Sheila Princess Obea. I'm also with my brother, Aikobwa Isaac, who is uh, going to be the next MP of IUP East Constituency. And of course, I'm with my brother, who I'm always with here in Uganda and in the diaspora, and his name is Gabriel Victor. Going to be the next MP of Terrible Constituency. I also salute my brother, Adad Salim, who we'll spent the whole day together in Aroa here in his constituency. Because as a young man, I believe that he will do wonders as a new member of parliament for Aroa Central Division. I salute you, ladies and gentlemen, listening to us out there, the team that we've been moving with, the noble deputy president of People Power and the National Unity Platform. That woman is a woman and a half. All right, and uh, speaking of uh, Dr. Lina Lebiga, she is actually sitting 
uh, in the studio two where we actually do have also a couple of uh, guests uh, who have accompanied the uh, Honorable Chagulani here. And uh, Doctor, good evening. All right, we'll get back to uh, Dr. Uh, Lina Zeviga on that, but later on she will also have something to say. Later in the program, we will give you, the audience, a chance to call in uh, with your questions or comment. And uh, the number to call will be uh, 0793212162. Or you will call the studio number 0393273232. But also you can send us an SMS on the number 0788 We'll be doing translations in the local language for you and uh, we will definitely be also speaking to you in uh, the local language. That is uh, Lubara later on when we open the studio lines uh, to speak to you and also hear from you. Let me go straight to you, uh, Honorable uh, Chagulanyi. For a very long time, uh, we have known you to be a musician and uh, you have done wonderful songs that uh, many people have appreciated and uh, you have performed here in Arua for several times and uh, this time around uh, we are seeing you as a presidential candidate. Um, I must say that uh, it has just been of recent that uh, you have emerged on uh, the political scene before you were doing uh, music as I mentioned earlier on. What is that thing that drove you into politics? Well, if you were in my shoes, you would say that politics didn't enter me, but politics were born in me. Impossible for me to refuse. You understand? Uh, I did not get into politics. Politics got into me. Politics got into my work, politics got into my life. I was an ordinary artist oh. and I was having my good time until I noticed that the price at which I buy sugar is determined by politics. Even whether I can sing or not, it was determined by politics. So I did not get into politics, you know, I just responded to nature. I many times don't like to call it politics because, man, with our generation, when you talk about politics, it's like you are changing the meaning. I would rather we call it life. I would rather we call it reality. You know why? Because by calling it politics, it continuously disconnects, especially the young people, from the way they are being governed. I only was speaking the truth all through my musical career, and nobody was looking at it until I started calling upon young people to get actively involved in the way they're being governed, in the decisions that are being made for them and on behalf of them by people that are not affected. So I just got up and said, yo, how about we go there where decisions are made and we represent ourselves? In Uganda, we call it Kwevereram, but Kwevereram means getting involved. So. I wouldn't be quick to say I'm into politics and I wouldn't be quick to say I'm a politician. But I would love to say that I got involved in the decisions that are being made for me and on behalf of me. And by saying this, I'm meaning these young ladies and gentlemen who are in my generation. For a very long time, we were disconnected from the way we were being governed, decisions being made until we noticed we were growing. So, yeah. One particular turning point where I saw that it was important for me to get involved was when I was attacked by a young man who was my age, but because he was working within the security system, he was offended because I was driving an expensive car. He attacked me, slapped me, and told me to show up to go to the country as owners. That is when I realized that indeed we had been turned into slaves, into objectives that are not supposed to objects that are not supposed to live but to exist and that is when I started of course when I started um, it was like um, awakening a mass you know uh, fraction of the population that had always wanted to get involved a 
and here we are. So I am here not as a politician. I am here as one of the many young people that want to get involved, that want to see things change, that have been waiting for people to change things for us. And those people are not coming only to realize that we are the ones to change things for ourselves. And that is our endeavor. On uh, some occasions, I have seen you speak on uh, the Ugandan Thursday. And I know that uh, you watch uh, football too, and you love it. And uh, if you look at uh, issues of football, when a coach is deciding to put a player uh, on the pitch, the coach actually has uh, been informed uh, in the mind that this player actually knows what he is going to do on the pitch, either score goals or prevent goals from uh, going into, into the goal. Uh, what is your knowledge on governance? knowledge on governance is the fact that I want better and I know better can be provided especially when the right team is put together a committed team I am not here as a professional I have not been a prefect before I have not run for office before but I know that this country is just as much as my country as it is Princess Shela's country as it is Jadribo's country, as it is uh, everybody's country. So it is not a matter of who knows governance most. It is not a matter of who is most experienced. It is a question of we demanding for better. And if somebody cannot get better for us, we will say step aside because we have the power to put you aside and handpick people that can do this. You understand? So I'm not here. Um, to show off experience. There are so many young men and women that are very experienced. For example, the people that we work with have, have so much experience, but they have no way to get into the system. I don't know if I'm answering you right. Uh, you, you are, and I believe the listeners are also uh, mm-hmm. listening to what you are saying. But if you look at uh, the issues of governance, well, we cannot separate governance from uh, issues of, uh, 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 well, raising and uh, creating awareness on what you need is one thing. But also we know that that aspect of governance is there. And uh, uh, what confidence can you create in Ugandans who are listening to this talk show, especially within this region, that you will actually, first of all, demand, once given the opportunity, make sure that that comes to fruition. How do you intend to run uh, the country, for instance, if you become president? Uh, thank you very much. I want you to know that for a long time we have been made to believe that for somebody to make the right choices, that for somebody to make the lives of their people better, you must um, show off a certain kind of so-called credentials. Let me take you back in the 70s. The president that has served this country um, best in my in my own view the president that has been most committed to bettering the lives of these people was president Idi Amin. this is a president that did not even have a university degree okay uganda is not short of uh, beautiful policies uganda is not short of beautiful ideas but all these ideas have been studied, researched, and uh, discussed, written, and shelved. Why? Because there is no political will. There is no commitment to better the lives of the people. Buju Banton, uh, the Jamaican singer, says, Who feels it knows it. I don't need any kind of experience to know that it is wrong for women to die when they are giving birth. It is not rocket science for people to know that actually it's a question of um, uh, appropriating the right funds and following them up and being strict to see that they do what they are supposed to do. And that's exactly what we intend to do. It is simplistic, as simple as that. And of course, getting the right people that have their mind and heart in the right place. Our biggest problem has been the elitist talk that we come on radio station and you must describe this 
for, 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 any, for any leader to be entrusted with the, with the betterment of the lives of the people. He has to talk very good to Queen English, etc., etc. That is not what I bring. All I bring is a, 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 a good heart and a mind that is in one place. And yes, in my own situation, I'm trying to be president of this country. Not that I'm going to be the doctor operating people. Not that I'm going to uh, make all the policies to better our education system. But to say that, hey, we want an education system that is going to produce not job seekers, but job creators. We want an education system that is going to give us the best in our people. We want uh, a healthcare system that will ensure that our children don't die. I don't have to be a doctor to do that. We want an economy that works for all people, not an economy that is going to produce statistics. But when you go down, the people's lives are not getting better. As simple as that. Now, for these um, uh, ministers of, of finance, it, is, it will be their duty to put all those statistics together. But those statistics must translate into betterment of the lives of the people. As simple as that. Yes, uh, uh, Honorable uh, Kagulani, if you, uh, I, I think for me, you are a Catholic like me. And I read from the Bible that uh, there was a time when God was giving manna to the people. And uh, the way you speak makes me think of uh, uh, that those times when people would receive. You are saying it doesn't matter what the, the, the statistics are, what uh, the literature says about issues of governance, administration, and so on. What matters is this must be done. But what miracle are you going to do to reach there without the basics? My brother, I'm a Catholic like you. The only difference is that I don't believe in miracles. I believe in reality. So and I'm not talking about mana. In any case, it is the current regime that is promising mana. For the first time, they, they, they say that we are uh, bringing Ndandikwa for young people. Second, they say we are bringing uh, Bonava Gankawale. That's in Uganda, but in English, say everybody gets rich. Now they're bringing a Mioga, etc., etc. That is not what our people want. What our people want is a system that is a fair, is a system when you work so hard, you earn, okay? It is where the social fairness as simple as that. We have very hard working people. They don't want handouts. I'm not intending to give handouts, my brother. Let me make it simple. Uh, in our um, manifesto, we talk about raising the payment of our security uh, forces, the police, the soldiers, and I'm saying I want to raise it to one million shillings each. It's not a miracle. Why? Because that money is there. Yes, it's here alone. I sit in parliament. And the classified uh, budgets have come up to the tune of 4 trillion shillings. Where that money goes, I don't know. How it disappears, that is the miracle. How I am going to ensure that that money goes to our servicemen and women is not the miracle. Education. Let's go to education. I'm an artist, for example. I studied at university. I never got a job. A job, but I ended up creating jobs. Why? Because of that little training that I got from education. Yeah. So in our education system, I'm not only focusing on academics. I'm focusing. I want to give equal focus to the academics, the arts, and the athletics. And recently, we added agriculture. Why? Because while our schools will be producing engineers, doctors, chemists, etc., we want them to produce qualified and learned and trained athletes. That's the only way we're going to get more Akibuas, more Inzikurus, etc, etc. If, they give, if our education system gives equal importance to the arts, that is how you're going to produce more Bobby Wines, more Chameleons, and in, in a, a, a 2020, 2021 setting, you'll have more Michael Jacksons and Tupacs. That is not science. That's not a miracle. That works because I've seen it work. It has worked with me. So well, I'm not only speaking figuratively. I'm speaking realistically. All right, uh, uh, Bobby, you sit in Parliament and you have participated in uh, the budget uh, appropriation. And uh, we have also known that our budget for this, particularly this financial year, is uh, 
over 45 uh, 45.5 trillion shillings but also we have recently seen uh, some supplementary budgets approved in parliament and you know that Uganda finances up to about uh, 20 percent of its budget the rest comes from uh, the, 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 the outside world and uh, you have also been uh, participating in uh, campaigns that have actually uh, uh, tried to uh, send a message about uh, issues of over taxation uh, for instance you have uh, actually worked or even uh, tried to show concern over issues of social media tax, tax that was enacted previously so these things are things that you have seen are actually oppressing Ugandans and you are talking about increasing uh, probably for instance raising salaries of the police and we know the number of the police that we do have in this country and we know our sources of income how do you intend to raise these monies without going back to the issues that you were actually uh, campaigning against one um, I've already told you that that money is there. Where, yeah. where is it? The classified budget which you and I don't know what it does. Okay? The classified budget which is to the tune of 4 trillion, which you and I doesn't, don't know what it does. But I want to tell you that it gets stolen. It is the same money that is being used to buy of political opponents, etc, etc. Will should be appropriated for such causes. Okay? But again, going back to parliament, you think we have a parliament? My brother, the reason why I'm here trying as much as possible to campaign for the Shira princesses of here, to campaign for the Salims, the Isaacs, the, 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 the Dribbles, is because we want a better parliament. Our parliament is a rubber stamp. Our parliament is like a room of robbing the nation. Just recently, me, I'm a member of parliament, okay? But just recently, members of parliament, when Ugandans were running angry, they did not have food, members of parliament were busy giving, sharing money amongst themselves. It's shameful for me to even say I'm a member of parliament because that is a rotten house which needs to be cleared. Okay? Today, I, I was in the same parliament. Which parliament, I'm sorry to say, does not think for itself. It is strongly in the pocket of Mr. Museven. Because Mr. Museven he fears the young people who communicate on social media, he slapped a tax on social media. Even when he knows that people communicate on social media, young people learn on social media, Ugandans are unemployed and they work out there because they are smart, they are first world brains stuck in a third world country with the third world leaders. They, 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 they improvise on social media, but because he wants a poor population, he put a touch on social media. Even when our children are studying on social media using WhatsApp and Facebook ATC, he still put a tax on social media. And that same parliament passed that, and you tell me that's a parliament? Okay. All right. All right. That is a rubber stamp. All right, uh, we are uh, live on Radio Patches 94.5 FM, uh, Peace of Christ for All. But also I want to let you know that uh, we are now connected on uh, Radio Patches 101.4 FM from Gulu. And uh, all those who are listening to us uh, from Gulu, we want to uh, inform you that uh, we do have uh, uh, Honorable uh, Robert uh, Chagulani uh, here with us in the studio and uh, he is on his campaign trail and uh, recently the Electoral Commission actually cleared the 11 presidential candidates to start campaigns and uh, this time he's in Arua and uh, he has also toured other uh, districts uh, like Nebi, uh, like Pakwach and now we are discussing uh, his move for the presidency of uh, this country and uh, you will be able to join us on our studio line 0793212162 or 0393273232 you will also send us a text message on 0788956494. My name is Noel, the host, and we do have a couple of guests here in the studio with us. That is Studio 1, and also their guests in Studio 2. 
who have also joined us and notably we do have uh, Andy Opingopi who is uh, the member of parliament um, contestant on uh, Noop ticket for Aringa County. Andy, you're most welcome. 